Hey everyone, welcome to In Focus. This week, we're gonna be talking about how we go through an architectural photography shot. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to In Focus with Adam Goldberg Photography and Joseph Roybal Photography. I'm Adam. Hey everybody, I'm Joe, Joseph. How's it going, man? Good, dude. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Another week cruising by. I All know. These blend together still. We got a lot of coronavirus still going on. I know. I know. I know. Seems like there's you got no away, way, though. though. I got away. Yeah, I went to Wyoming. I went to Wyoming and camped with some friends. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm back now. But so how was your weekend? It was it was good. Um, Kind of just another another normal weekend, so no no complaints, no photography, no jobs, um, which is always always nice when you don't have to work on the weekends. I know we talked about that in a previous episode, so right. I, I did not do a whole lot of work this past weekend, which was nice. But now I'm excited then, for this week's episode. Right. Yeah. So what are we going to be diving into this week? I know last week it was a little more like I took the reins a bit. What do we got going this week? Yeah, so this week I am going to talk through a architectural photography shot. So kind of start to finish on site. So okay. this isn't going to be super, super technical from a Lightroom or Photoshop perspective. It's more going to be talking through my process when I'm on site with a client. So I got a number of photos lined up. So I'll just kind of talk through each of the different phases of kind of my process and we'll kind of go from there. Cool. And so then when you're doing this, uh, for those that are watching, how will this, you know, for them to be able to take it and like, you know, tether it to useful, uh, you know, how, how will that kind of be for you seeing this from the back end? Yeah. I mean, so, so my hope is that as I'm sharing the photos and talking through them, that our audience will glean kind of, okay, so this is what he was doing at this point in the process and why. Um, so again, yeah. I will, I'll kind of talk through kind of the before I got on site with the client and then as I took the photos, what my thought process was and then how I was going to use that to help create the final image when all is said and done. Cool. I think that's great. That'll be helpful. I know I was, when you, when you kind of mentioned it earlier, what you were thinking, I thought that'd be really, really helpful. I was interested. Yeah, so it's, you know, it, right now it's kind of tough to do a video on site and, and really show that process on site at a, you know, client site because bringing in extra people and cameras isn't going to work. So hopefully this is kind of the next best thing to an on site tutorial um, from an architectural hospitality shoot perspective. Perfect. Well, I'm excited. Yeah, cool. So should we just jump right in? I think so. I mean, heck, why, why keep showing our mugs when we could? learn something all right sounds good let's do it all right all right everyone so here we are here is a image of a hotel conference room so i'm just going to use this as an example as we kind of start to walk through again this shoot process as you can see the tables are set up we got some nice uh, greenery on there. We got the pens, the paper, the tables are all lined up. And so this is something that I did beforehand with the client. And so I had scouted this space with the client. We had talked about the shots that we wanted to take. So one was going to be from the corner, more showing the windows. The other shot was going to be something like this, a one point perspective, really showing what the space looks like as if maybe you're sitting at the back of the conference space. So okay. walked into the room and kind of got my camera set up in that one point perspective. So looking as straight on as possible to the front of the room with the TV and everything. We still had to make some tweaks to the space. And so this is where I again, I, again, I shoot tethered. So I use Cam Ranger. There's other software. Uh, Capture One is another great piece of software that you can use to tether. So I was looking on my iPad in live view and we were tweaking the tables and the chairs and the glasses and everything just to make sure everything was lined up and looking as good as possible 
for the shot. So before I even have taken a shot, a test shot, so to speak, I've tried to line everything up as good as possible. I've gotten my focus, sharp, tack, tack sharp. And so then that way, when I'm ready to start taking photos, I'm hopefully 95% of the way there. Does that make sense, Joe? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I'm looking at everything here, just the arrangement, the placement of the, the bases, you know, next to the, uh, well, I'm just drawing the little, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on the little, the greeneries. <laughs> That's it, why I call them tree. greeneries too, but they're succulents, I think is the correct yeah. terminology. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Yeah. And so just to ask then yeah. like for comp composition here, you know, since I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about it, you know, um, when you were, when you were lining yourself up, were you, this was when you said one point yep. perspective, is Correct. this about one point more so, or is this, and what is the difference of a one point, two point? Yeah. So this is kind of a standard architectural photography shot. It's called a one point perspective and base, basically you want your camera pointed straight at what would be the vanishing point or the, all of the converging lines in the photo. And so if you took from the upper corners and drew lines diagonally towards the center of the photo, it should line up perfectly in the middle. Perfect. Okay. Um, and usually it is facing again, like straight on against something. So a wall, a building, something like that. So when you're doing the one point perspective, your vertical line should be perfectly vertical and your horizontal line should be perfectly vertical as well. So horizontal lines, horizontal, vertical lines, vertical when Wait. you're doing that one point perspective. Okay. And then, so how do you achieve like the height, you know, and when you're saying that, like, is that just the here when you're looking at that, like the, uh, the cabinets off in the distance and you have those two tables off in the left and right, did you arrange your tripod head to have the separation between table and... I did. So, yeah. So, I mean, those are all the things that you need to kind of think about and try and line up as well as possible. Cool. You don't want a lot of things overlapping that just kind of creates clutter. So having that separation, like you said, between the tables and the cabinet in the back, so that way you can really see and define what it is, helps to, I think, make a really good architectural photography photo. If you cool. have lots of different things that are overlapping, then it kind of takes away a little bit of what each individual object is. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And then just to not get too far off of it, but what's a two point? Is that something that exists or am I making that up? Um, I think you're making it up. There might be. That's not a term that I, I would use. Um, it's kind of, uh, you know, you kind of have that off center view. So if you were standing in the corner, um, okay, that would kind of be your two point because you're not having three walls in the photo, you'd have two walls in the photo, you'd have the gotcha. wall maybe on your right, and then gotcha. the wall on okay. the left. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm, I'm clear, keep going. You're clear, all right, good. So this was basically my test shot. So after I had lined everything all up, I was like, all right, now how is this actually gonna look as a first photograph? And at this point, you can kind of make some additional tweaks to everything to try and get everything lined up. Again, in this case, I did have the client with me, so I was able to show them the photo and say, hey, is this basically what we're looking for here? This is kind of what your photo is gonna look like when all is said and done. If your client's not there, um, it's great to have an assistant if you can, so that way, again, someone else has eyes on the photograph, because you don't wanna miss something, whether it's something as simple as a trash can, a chair's out of alignment, anything like that, because you can just get so focused on some of these little things that right. you're focused on that you kind of miss something that's just so obvious when you're, when you're going through the photo. So the, again, so this was just kind of the test shot to, to kind of get things going. Okay. And once I've kind of done maybe one or two test shots, again, if I need to adjust the camera height, any of those things, do those test shots, then I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go. And so the first thing that I'll do, and I'm gonna clip, flip through here is, I will take a set of bracketed photos with the lights on and the lights off, if I can. Obviously, with every shoot, you might not be able to turn the lights off, in which case I'll just do a bracketed set with the lights on. But if I can do a set of bracketed shots with the lights off, 
and the lights on, then I'll do that. And the reason I do that is that this kind of gives me a lot of different options when I get into Photoshop to decide which pieces do I potentially want to use. Which one do I want to use as my base layer? Do I want to bring in some light from a different photo that was maybe a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, that kind of stuff. So here's the, with the lights off and you'll see the color difference with the lights on and the lights off. So this was the five brackets with the lights off and then your brackets with the lights on. And you can see, we got some people coming in, some chairs moved. Um, but again, there's our brackets mm -hmm. of, okay, here is our, our, our brackets with the lights on, lights off. Again, just kind of gives an example of how the light changes. You can see these lights especially are really, really yellow compared to with the brackets with the lights off yeah so this is a much more natural looking image in my opinion than with the lights on okay so you know if you kind of compare them there, there you go so you have option one and option two okay so and i still like go ahead oh so when you're looking at a photo and you're thinking you know natural for people like myself and a lot of people that are listening, you know, it's like, all right, so you've got natural and warm or yellow. When mm -hmm. you're editing, do you do you prefer one over the other? And do you then bring up the other to match or get them to match? And is that something that you'll do? Yeah. So I really like to have my colors be as natural as possible. So when I can shoot with the lights off, I'm going to shoot with the lights off. I think that gives me the most control over the light. Okay. Um, if there's obviously going to be situations where you can't. So again, this is a hotel. We have access to the light switches. That's super easy. If you're in a big office space or something, you might not have access or a hotel lobby. You might not have access to the light switches. So you're going to have to work with the lighting that's available to you. And that's where adding some artificial light through flash pops or um, a hot light of some kind can really allow you to, again, control the light in the way you want so that way you can get the colors that you want. I like to have my colors be as accurate as possible. Um, I'm not going to desaturate. So, for example, if I can't take away, if I can't turn the lights off, I'm not going to necessarily desaturate my yellows 100%, but I yeah. am going to tone them down significantly in Photoshop so that way that element of the photo is kind of taken away. So that way my blues are blues, my grays are grays, my whites are looking pretty white as opposed gotcha. to kind of having that yellowish hue to them. Okay. So again, taking these five brackets with the lights on, the lights off, gives us a good baseline. So that way when we get home, we get into Photoshop, we know that there's nothing that's really gonna be missing. You really could just take those all 10 of those photos and create a really solid image if you needed to. That said, I think there's an opportunity to go above and beyond. And this is where adding some flash can really make a difference. And so here I am adding some flash to the scene. And what I've done in this case is I've turned off all the lights and closed the blinds. So really I'm basically working almost in the dark and just kind of popping my flash as I need to. Mm -hmm. And one of the things to think about is if you can't get it to a pretty dark state like this, the other option is to just speed up your shutter speed super, super fast, block out all of that ambient light, and then pop your flash. And so then that way, the only real light that you're capturing in the shot is through your flash. Does that make sense? Yeah, then you'd have to have a really powerful flash, right? Yeah, so this is about a thousand watt flash. So this is a mono light. This is not um, a speed light. Your speed lights usually I think have between about 60 to 120-ish watts. So this is about 10 times more powerful than that. And then the sun too. 
it's like a thousand times brighter than the sun. Exactly. And so, but again, if you're slowing your shutter speed down, I mean, if, if you're speeding up your shutter speed super fast, yeah. you can knock out a lot of that. That's cool. Well. And it allows you to kind of control the light. One thing that I always like to think about when I'm using my flash is what direction would the light normally be coming from? So in this case, you'd have light coming from the left side of the screen where those windows are across yep. to the right. And I think you made a great point. The sun is always going to be the strongest light source. If you're shooting at night interiors, great. You don't have to worry about that. But daytime, where is that natural light and the strongest light source going to be coming from? It's going to be left to right. So you want to make sure that as you're adding light with flashes, that you're mm -hmm. taking into consideration what direction the light in the scene would normally be coming from if you weren't speeding up your shutter speed and adding that flash. Sure. So then does that dictate which direction you point the flash like this? Um, it can. So in this case, I'm popping it straight up. Um, and so that was one. I can kind of walk you through a couple others. So again, yeah, I'm really popping this one straight up as well. You can see in this case, I actually have the doors, of the, those window shades open, adding in a little bit of extra light. Yeah. Um, but so for this shot on the side by the windows, I would not use this flash pop for any of the side by the windows because the light would be coming from the wrong direction. I would only brush in the side by the doors. I would only be using half of this photo from a flash perspective. Okay. Again and again. So now you can see I've moved to that left side of that screen of the room. And so now you can see that the light is flooding in from the left to the right. Right. And then here's an example now of me to your point, Joe, where's the direction of the light coming from? I'm actually just holding it up and shooting the light straight at the object in the direction that the light would naturally be coming from. There you go. So there's a couple different ways that you can do it and that I do it. A lot of it depends on the room what I'm shooting, how I'm shooting it is going to depend on, I mean, again, in this example, the ceiling is pretty low. You have the opportunity to pop the light. So that way it kind of fills out and spreads a little bit more if you want. Um, you also can do this where you're really just pointing the light very specifically and directly at objects. Right. Or part of the photo that you want to have lit up. Right. And so again, this one was me standing just off of camera and pointing it towards the front of the room a little bit um, kind of directly. So you're kind of getting some natural light kind of filling in again from the left to the right. Gotcha. And then again, here's another one. This one was basically to get that whole area where the TV and the cabinet right. is. So again, right. just pointing straight at it trying to light it up as if, okay, the light is coming from those big windows and doors and just filling in and creating some of those shadows. I like it. So what I'll do, and it's kind of similar to, to the bracketing, I'll always take my time when I do these flash pops. Um, I'm tethered, I have my iPad with me, so I can really take my time and look and see, okay, how does this look? Is this going to add the light that I want to make sure is added to the photograph? Mm -hmm. um, and then if not, I can just re reshoot it. I don't have to walk back to the camera, check on anything. I can make any adjustments that I need to, to my flash power, to shutter speed, anything like that straight from where I'm standing. So that's a huge, sure. huge time saver as you're kind of going through the shot. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, there's, so that, I mean, there's a couple different ways, again, you can do it. I try and do it with the, in, in this case, I should say, hotel photography sometimes can be different than kind of your standard architectural photography. Again, I have the ability to turn the lights off here and really control the lights so that way it is gonna filter in the exact way I want it. And mm -hmm. so I'll do this for a lot of my hotel shots in 
hotel rooms, conference rooms, anything like that. As you start getting out into hotel lobbies or office spaces, things like that, again, since you don't have the opportunity to turn the lights off, you're going to have to kind of play with the flash and shutter speed a little bit more than you do yep. here because, okay, now in addition to maybe the natural light coming in through the windows, you're also going to have some potentially strong lights from above. Yeah. Um, right. some, some strong overhead lights. So again, picking where you want to put your flash pops is something that just takes time, I think, to be like, okay, where and how do I want to pop this flash? Where do I want to have highlights mm -hmm. in my shot? Right. right. Because again, our eyes are always drawn to the brightest part of the scene. So thinking about that path that you want to take your viewer on, either from the foreground to the background, with, okay, where do I want to add some additional light? Sure. And really make a difference in kind of a, a really good photo and something that's going to be used for marketing purposes and is a great photo. Right. Right. Well, this is really awesome here seeing how you're taking and like directing that light, really guiding it. And then, you know, how you're thinking about, like you said, it's going to take time for people to figure this all out. But at the same time, this right here for illustrative purposes is showing, you know, your thought process and it makes, it makes complete sense. Yeah. And so then here is the final photo. Um, and so a couple things that I always kind of think about as I'm doing a shot like this, when I'm doing my flash pops and stuff like that, I'm not worried about the ceiling at all. I'm not worried about how the light is spilling on the ceiling at all, because I'm probably going to take one of my bracketed shots from earlier and just blend that in. So you can see, how the ceiling is brighter on one side of the photo than it is on the other. And so again, I'm just trying to mimic that natural light kind of coming in to the scene. So when you have a space like this or a small room, don't worry about the ceiling when you're doing your flash pops. I think that's just kind of a quick, easy tip. So that was something when I was first starting out, I'm always, as I'm thinking about how can I blend these photos together? I'm like, well, there's all this filler light on the ceiling for my flashes, it's just, just don't even worry about it. Because that's why you take those bracketed shots. That way you can just put in a ceiling later. Um, and again, you can see kind of how that shot before, you had some really strong shadows with mm -hmm. this on that back wall and kind of coming off the back wall. And you can see how it's a little bit more tame in the final photo. And that's again, where having some of that natural light and blending in a little bit of the natural light just gives it a little bit more of a natural feel. So you still have shadow to kind of show the direction of the light, but it's maybe not as harsh as it was from the flash. So it's for me, it's just kind of that balance of taking a base layer, which is one of those bracketed shots from the beginning with the lights off and slowly just kind of adding in the flash. And I do use light and mode a lot for that, but not always. And I can definitely go through kind of an edit of how I got, took all of these photos and kind of created this image at some point. But again, the purpose of this one was to kind of more talk through a little bit. Okay, so what steps am I taking when I'm on site and kind of the shots that I'm taking to kind of create a final deliverable image to a client? Yes. Dude, that's awesome. Seriously, this photo is like magic. Well, thank you, man. Excited. Yeah, I mean, and again, you, you always look back on it and there's always, I think, things that you can look at and say, oh man, I wish I'd kind of done that differently or edited it differently. Um, but again, things to always think about when you're on site is get those bracketed shots out of the way right at the beginning after yeah. you've done your test shots and everything like that, get those bracketed shots out of the way. So that way, when you're done doing your flash pops and, and that, you're done with the photo. You don't have to think about doing anything else. Um, and having those, again, will, will give you a lot of options 
in Photoshop when you're doing your editing, if you do kind of miss something with a flash pop or something else, well, I have a little bit brighter of a shot here that maybe I can brush some stuff in. Um, so that way it looks exactly the way that you want it. Um, that's right. So this, that's a good one. And then again, you know, working with your flash pops, having being tethered just gives, again, gives you that option to mm -hmm. see it right on site. So that way you can be like, all right, I got this. This is exactly how I'm going to want it to look when it's done. Nope. It's too bright, too dark, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, with those flash pops. And then it's about, again, getting into Photoshop when you're done, Lightroom Photoshop when you're done and mm -hmm. kind of creating that final image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. And like here, like I asked earlier about the t color temperature and matching and, you know, what I, what I have always noticed about your photography, especially if you've gotten better over, over the, you know, pretty short time here, a year or two, um, looking at your, um, you know, the light fixture that's hanging from the ceiling and looking at the, the lights, uh, you know, in the panels uh, in the ceiling, but, but noticing how the color temperature is really, really clean. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's not that like bleed over. And I think that's something that I think would be really fascinating if you ever felt like sharing and I yeah. uh, like kind of showing how people could, you know, cause I think that's what a lot of people struggle with is how do you get, you know, like, I mentioned to you earlier before the recording of like, you know, aligning your, 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 your wall or your windows. Like if you wanted, if your client was like, Hey, I want to be able to see the trees outside. Yeah. You know, making sure that you get that to all line up and, you know, align. Cause then you've got bright or dark outside, lighter inside. And it's just complex, but you know, the, the lights I think are something that are fascinating for people, myself included. So, yeah. I mean the, you, if you think about it, a interior designer, picked the color of the objects, whether it's a piece of furniture, it's a rug, the desk color in here, the wall, the paint color on that wall. Someone chose those colors for a reason. And sometimes when the lights are put in, I mean, they have that yellowy hue to them. They're very warm. And my goal is to represent the space as accurately as possible and so to me that is okay this paint color is supposed to be kind of a teal-ish blue so i'm going to make sure that when my final edit is yeah. done that that is the color that it was intended to be that's awesome that's a good little nugget and yeah i mean i'm, I'm happy to in another episode i can kind of talk through some of the editing in a little bit more detail um, especially like you said, kind of the colors and then some of the window tricks that are sure. out there to kind of match what you have from a interior perspective, brightness and outside, because there can be a huge dynamic range difference between those two. And mm -hmm. so getting it so that way it looks natural, I think is, is really important when you're doing windows, um, for your clients. And I think there is a difference though, too, because I think a lot of times on the interior design side of things, it's okay to have blown out windows. You got to still make sure that your window frames aren't blown out, but the actual window itself can be blown out. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you're doing architectural photography, hospitality photography, they want that really, really clean window view. And there are definitely some ways to get that for sure. Yeah. Cool, dude. Well, this is awesome. Yeah. All right. I am going to hop out of this screen share. Hope cool. everyone enjoyed that and we'll, we'll be right back. All right. So hopefully that was helpful for everybody. The goal really was to show my thought process when I'm on site at a shoot and the steps that I take to take the photos. So that way when I get home into Lightroom and Photoshop, I have all the images that I need. So again, start off with that bracket. If you can do with the lights off, great. Otherwise, you at least have that bracket with the lights on. And then do any flash pops that you need to do. Being tethered gives you that flexibility to see on a big screen exactly how that flash pop looked. And then you can go ahead and make any quick adjustments that you need to do it again, get all those images and get home with, with hopefully a final product that is gonna wow your client.
yeah, man, this was awesome. It really, you know, I, I found that super helpful uh, and informative, just how you, your thought process go, going through, setting up your shot, lining everything up. And uh, the one point perspective, the yep. one point, that was, you know, it's my favorite because it's my favorite Probably. because it can just show off the space so well with those horizontal and vertical lines, just absolutely yeah. perfectly straight. Revelatory. It's amazing. Yeah. Cool. I mean, and, and again, I'd love to get on site and be able to do a video for everyone. So hopefully we can do that sometime soon and definitely maybe next week we'll jump into some post-processing so that way, okay, we kind of talk through here a little bit how the shot is taken on site mm -hmm. and then like you had kind of mentioned talking through maybe some of the windows and color temperature and stuff yeah. like that. So that way your image can really, really stand out. That's cool. I'm excited. If you're excited, hopefully our audience is excited. They are. Awesome. Well, I'll put some details in the show notes so that way everybody has those. You can check those out um, in the show notes with all the details and information about kind of my process here. But with that, um, again, thank you for tuning in. You can find us on YouTube, which is where you're watching us at in focus video cast. Be sure to click the subscribe button. Tell your friends, the more people we have watching, hopefully the more people that will learn something and gives us the motivation to kind of continue to do these for you all. Yeah. You can also take us on the go. We're on iTunes, Spotify, all of those wonderful places. So if you don't have the opportunity to do it on YouTube, go ahead check us out there, take us with, uh, obviously you want to have the visual part of it, but hopefully a lot of that knowledge will still come through when you're listening in your car or on a run, something like that. And of course we do want your feedback, questions, anything like that. Email us at infocusvideocast at gmail.com. Absolutely. Dude, this is fun. Like I said, it's always fun to get with you and hanging out once a week. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this as well, watching this and uh, feedback. Would love it. We love it. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. And Joe, I will, uh, I'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Bye. See ya.